Ah, there we go. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on the twenty third of January, twenty twenty three. Look at that, double twenty twenty three. Will we ever get it again? Who knows? I didn't even realize it was a Friday the thirteenth, like last week or the week before. Um, so that kind of caught me out. Uh, I have half a bottle of water, which I shall occasionally take a swig from. But one thing I also didn't realize was uh, uh, Sunday was the first day of the Chinese New Year. So happy uh, Year of the Rabbit, everyone. Um, or rather, we're going into the Year of the Rabbit. So, uh, yeah, big celebration. I guess I always get thrown off that uh, Chinese New Year is based on the... Uh, moon cycles, so it's a different day every year. I think next year will be like January 12th or something. Um, it'll just be a lot earlier. But speaking of a lot earlier, how about let's hop into Warrior Land 3. Uh, so uh, yeah, in the last stream, uh, you know the drill. It was mostly. Hold on, where's the reflect? I guess I'm not viewing what just happened last time. Um, but yeah, in the last stream, uh, pretty much, uh, got a bunch of stuff, pretty much, fought a few bosses, uh, just meandered more around the map. I remember a volcano erupted, so that was good fun. And, uh, yeah, in this stream, I was, you know, makes sense, right? Yeah. Let me try and remind myself what I've gotten. I'm pretty sure there's nothing in this map. Uh, so I think the, uh, cool, the, the intention is to change my time of day. Yes. Uh, but I think the, the main thing is there's probably stuff in the east map to, to witness and to go towards. Um, so how about the castle? Sure. Um, cause I'm pretty sure, yeah, I haven't gotten everything yet, so... Uh, I also am decently sure at the end of the last part, I got this ability. And I think I didn't use it too much, but I could ground pound. So, perhaps this will come to, to use here. We gotta watch out for the squid- oh, I can touch the squidward zombie. Sure, okay. Well, these are some fun lights over here. Uh, See, that looks a little promising, having the, uh, the thing there. So yeah, I couldn't... <laughs> I can actually just ground pound that now. But I don't even need that, because that's for the, the chest, which I don't need, so. Uh, but yeah, so this week has been, um, oops. This week has been decently good fun. Um, definitely a bit of... Fun stress, uh, I guess. Uh, fun stress, is that, is that the phrase I'm gonna put it? Point is, is that I was a little worried about, uh, shipping. Yet again. Um, I can't push that because it's night time. I swear that this room had... This is in the way because it's night time, is it? Oh no, no, it's not because it's night time, it's because you gotta throw a guy. Yep. I was like, I was like, no, I solved this before. So anyway, there is the red, oops. There was the red, uh, coin there, which makes me think there's something good in this room that I need to pay attention to. But, how do I get him all the way up? That is the chest, so I'm going to have to get up there somehow. It doesn't look very favorable. Um. Hmm. Let me, let me just cross reference as well. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking this is the right place. This is why I get for not planning. But I'm pretty sure I went to... Well, I guess I guess the, the big important thing is I can just check my inventory roughly for... 
Um, or rather, I could just do this to see what's, what I've gotten in the level. So if I check N1, N1 I've only gotten two things in. I'm pretty sure N6. Yeah, I think N6 is probably where I need to go. Back here, because... Look at this. Right here. There we go. Just right off the top of my head. So, uh... But yeah, so I, uh... Some of you may may remember I had that 4070 Ti ordered uh, last week. And, uh, like classic Ozpos, uh, it's at the place right near me on Tuesday. And just it never came until literally this morning. So, this is a very Mario Brothers kind of room, isn't it? Got pipes, go back to the other sides. I've got to somehow get an enemy. Come on. Is this gonna come over or. Go. Okay. This goes the other way. Uh, but yeah, no, the 4070Ti took its time to come in. And it's finally here, as of... Uh... Well, as of, yeah... <laughs> uh, noon today, so... That was good fun, uh, but... Yeah, I put it in, and... It works! Oops. I think I have to be rolling! Oh, but it does get a bit dark in here. It's a bit awfully dark in this room. Huh. Um, but yeah, it took its sweet time. So, uh, I haven't given it a crazy amount of go, but I did give it the, uh, the immediate once around. So I had a Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just as a, a, a nice decent bench. Literally, like, 110 FPS, um, compared to, uh, like, the 50 on, a uh, my 1080 Ti. Uh, and that's... Same setting, so it's it's not using ray tracing as a test, it's just, that's just it. It's also not using uh, DLSS, which is, I think it's only supporting DLSS 1 in that game, but who knows, depending on how you think of it, DLSS 1 might be good enough. Um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I didn't have that great a run with a XESS, because that game also has XESS. Um, but, uh... But yeah, so I was like, yeah, that's that's nice and comfy that it's got double the the frame rate there. Um, I also gave a run through Quake 2 RTX, which is not really like clearly it would not run well at all on the 1080 Ti. But I thought as kind of an interesting test, the 1080 Ti can do about 26 FPS if you run it at 360p. If you run it really really small, or the render resolution is that small, it'll work. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it, it runs fairly better. It's still in the 40s, the 40 FPS, uh, 42 or so, um, at 4K. But when you think about it, 4K is 36 times the number of pixels as 360p. So the fact that they can do that at a better frame rate, this is what I thought. I just didn't have the two pieces put together. Pull these bits. And I guess the owl gets tired? The owl. The only one, but... Now there's probably going to be an owl in a level that I've been to. Or it's daytime. There's an owl in the hole. And the frigid sea. And the castle. That's what I was thinking. So... Uh, while I'm at it as well, I think... I think I can go here, just to... Just to s snag this one off as well. This is a ground pound ball. Something in here is gonna be, like, absolutely destructible. Oh! And the answer is me! So... Uh, but yeah, I, I did that, and lastly I did a bit of a stable diffusion uh, benching, and uh, it's about, like, Six, seven, seventeen, depending on what you're doing, times faster. Uh, getting, getting like nine and a half iterations a second. I've seen some people who are, can actually get twenty. I don't know if they're even using really the right, not the right settings as in like, the wrong settings, but the right settings as in... I guess I broke down here before, it's just kind of interesting I can break down here again. That's for the, that's for the red key. 
so I'm not gonna need that. Um, but yeah, uh, it's definitely a lot faster at that, which I'm very surprised about because I was thinking there was gonna be a problem with uh, needing to have. Um, oh, I'm curious why I could break that block. Do I have to do it while I'm fire? That seems kind of weird, but makes oh my gosh, it's gone. That doesn't make sense why it'd have to be on fire. No, it, re it really doesn't make sense. Um, but I will say from just like initial testing, I'm happy with how it's performing. And definitely I would love to give it more of a go and especially in some more real world uh, kind of examples for me. Because that's the big thing is that like as much as like uh, in the techie space people will love comparing benchmarks, at the end of the day, if the performance is what you need, that's all that matters. So don't don't feel like oh you should get a 4070 Ti because I, I got one and rah 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 is the only card you need. Different cards for different different fellas. Uh, this is the donut room and then like, that's gonna have a key there. Maybe I'm just at the wrong time of day. I feel. But why can I break that if I could just go down here anyways with the zombie? That's what I'm confused about. I'm not understanding this. So I think I might be at the wrong time of day. I think I'm at the wrong time of day. Let's back out. Totally nailing. How many things have I gotten? One. It's been 12 minutes. Nearly keep getting squidworded all the time. Oh my gosh. So this is the curious thing I'm trying to figure out. You've got this, but you can clearly go down as the zombie. So my only thought was, is there something down here that doesn't require the zombie? Or rather, can be done without the zombie because you're gonna, you know, fall through the platforms, but... Doesn't seem like the case so far. And also on top of that, like, no coin hints to tell me that I'm in the room with the, the blue chest. But there is this door, which was closed before, so it's possible that it was just in here the whole time. Let's see, we got... That's at the top here. This room looks familiar. Like I've explored it already. Can it not roll? Green key? Okay. I can break down in here. Why? <laughs> just for the just for the coin? Okay. Sure. Um, oh my gosh, I'm a dummy. But, uh, yeah, in terms of actual technology stuff for uh, people to potentially buy, uh, Apple has announced the M2 Mac Mini and MacBook Pro, uh, which is a very mild kind of product. There wasn't, there's not really too much out of, uh, out of the, the M2, I feel. Um, so... Okay, I've got I've got a, a, a tab open in case I'm taking too long and I'm just like thinking it going, yeah no I'm completely lost here. Die zombies, not be safe fire apparently. Uh but uh but yeah no, so Apple has announced these uh devices, the M2 chip has already existed. Did I really just never go in this room? Oh, I looked in this room. Did you just break the ground? Starting point, head right, dash into blocks, avoiding the enemies. Climb up the ladder, proceed left, climb up another ladder. Was it just here? 
Oh, it might have actually been this. Because if I go down, there's a frog and you need to be able to ground pound him up. That's what it is. Playing Russian roulette with the pipes. This is not Russian roulette. not any roulette, really. None of these working. Oh, okay. Now it works. Oh my... Amazing. Just caught first go. Um, but yeah, the, the devices, they're basically just the same kinds of devices, even not using any uh, real fanciness. Um, in terms of their chassis or really any features that I could see. Um, but they're using the M2 Max, uh, M2 chips, and therefore they've got, um, uh, a bit of extra processing horse horsepower, a bit of bandwidth, and most importantly, they cost a bit more. A, a decent bit more, which is, eh. Actually, they, sorry, they, yeah, no, they don't, actually. The Mac Mini cost bang on a thousand bucks instead of eleven hundred, which, or it was nine hundred and I'm remembering it wrong. The point is, it's like, okay, like this is a very incremental improvement, which is bizarre because M2 shouldn't be the incremental improvement. Look at that! You don't have to go into a level to change time of day, you just press the button. Easy. What a cool feature as well. Anyway, on to the East World. Um, let's see if I can <laughs> double time it up. Uh, but yeah, the um, I feel like yeah, when it comes to the Mac Mini, you don't have to absolutely wow people. It's a Mac Mini. It serves its purpose, which is to basically be a very tiny Mac kind of Nux style computer, and they're really neat for what they are. Um, because, at the end of the day, a lot of people buy Apple products to have that, like, all-in-one ecosystem. And I'm, I kind of find the Mac Mini to be very admirable because it is intentionally not very ecosystem-y. I mean, maybe the, the software, you can make the case of, like, oh, but the software is, it has to be. Um, so again, this is where the thing is, but now, clearly, I woke up an owl. So, there must be something more to the level after waking up the owl. But, if I woke up the owl, where is the owl? There's the green chest, so that's clearly too far unless I'm actually getting the green chest. Oh, look at this, and I go, yep, that's still a bit too far out, so I'll just start with that. Um, but yeah, for, for MacBook Pro, I guess there is a bit of a, mm, what do you do with a laptop to kind of like make it groundbreaking? And I guess, is this a, is this a thing where like perhaps pa Apple has done the paradigm shift so many times that they're kind of unparadigm shifting now. They're trying to reel it back into some degree. There's the rumors that the, uh, not this MacBook, this ended up not having that, I think, but the, um, but there were rumors that there was going to be a later MacBook that had a touchscreen, and that would basically cannibalize the whole point of having an iPad. The iPad is, in my eyes, a bit dead. There's not really any point in having an iPad anymore. At all, really. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a tablet, there's going to be people who are just like, ah, oh, you know, that serves my needs. And that's fine, but I feel like, yeah, in terms of like... I guess on a software level, there's a bit too much branching out. There's too much like splitting up uh, when it comes to maybe phones, mobile, laptop, desktop, uh, enterprise slash workstation. Like all this starts getting, you know, like too many levels if you have to keep programming stuff differently. And uh, I guess one advantage with the M1 Max and the M2 Max is that they can run iOS apps natively because they, they run the same instruction set. So, it's not, like, too weird, 
for them to just, like, eventually assimilate um, the the Mac into, or sorry, the iPad into the, uh, the assimilating the iPad into the, um, just the Mac's ecosystem. But, it is kind of like, yeah, you've got to, well, you know, that, uh, some people are going to feel left out because that is the product for them. Um, so I don't really know an answer for that. I feel like I just described a bunch of stuff and it's like, yeah, some people are just not gonna like that. Like, that's not really, <laughs> that's not really much of a take home, is there? That's what I get for doing that too early. I feel like I'm just raw exploring this one level again. Like I explored it at the end of the last stream, got the one key, got, got the gray, gray one, and then it's just like, yeah, now what do I do? Like, I've seen the chest, it clearly looks too far out, it looks, it looks too far away, I don't quite get where the green key, or where the green functionality is right now, with the green chest, how to get that. So my brain's just kind of going, okay, let's just continue on, let's just like... I could have ground pounded there, but... Oh, I could ground pound there. Right? Or am I an idiot and I just destroyed the bear and I could have picked up the bear? I'm thinking it's around there. That seems like a place I'd be able to to leverage. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, you know, Apple needs to sell products and I don't know, they've still got like a corner of the market that is a, a large corner of the market. Something where no one is ever going to second guess how large, you know, or like how many people are going to buy a Mac, MacBook Pro. People are going to do it. People are like, oh, I'm holding out because the M2 Macs are coming out. Everyone does have a technology. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's one where it's like, yeah, are we like, we're at this kind of weird point where like, it's a bit tough for technology to seem relevant. That's it. That sounds like a real bold claim. So I can't deal with that, so So I don't think I can do this. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. it just they signaled it to me and I'm like, no, I don't I don't Oh yeah. Man, this is a this is a swell time. Oh, speaking of swell time, this reminds me of uh, the the wonderful cold from yesterday's uh, from last year's last year. Oh my gosh, can I get the the time of date right? My brain is a mush today. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, I remember in this level in the last stream, uh, I was absolutely like you know, snotting out, and I'm fortunately a lot better, but it took me quite a few days to truly recover from that, and, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was just a gnarly cold. Okay, so there's one part of the level where I can definitely like, throw this up. I remember throwing it up, because I've got three of the chests. So I knew I threw it up here. I guess the water is clear. That's where the green... Yeah, that's this is where the green key was. And we basically addressed that. So I'm thinking this is... 
door at the far side. But I feel like, didn't I also explore that? And did it just give me a coin? Because I'm thinking, like, this, this has to be related to that owl waking up. Another red key is probably the, the closest one there. And I remember spending a good amount of time trying to get in, get that rock going in right. But yeah, did this go towards... No, this is literally where the red key is. This is where the red chest is, because it's just gonna... Yeah, if I just, like, crouch there... I can't see it from here. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I can see. What is going on? Every time I go on this level, I keep mistaking which way was the red key, but it seems like it was trickier to... I think it's because the silver key is the close one, so that means, where is the blue one? Where is the blue? Am I just still eternally caught out? I just like... I swear, I swear, did I just... I... I had a sparkle in this level. And suddenly, wow, this is a, this is a butt stream. This is a real, like, I'm playing like butt. Or rather, I'm just understanding this game like butt. This makes me feel like you could break this wall. Because there's clearly more over there, so... Okay, that's not more over there, though. And obviously this water is... I don't get it. I, I like this level shined on me. I guess it's not the first level. I guess E4 is the one that shined. I mean, it looked like there was an owl here, so. Okay. There's, there's this owl. Oh. Ooh, he's very upset. -y. He's going. I think it's just Turbo Owl because uh, he's had his coffee. Okay, so that's a platform. Uh, I can't go in there yet. See, that's the silver key. I don't really need that anymore. But I can definitely fly up here and start... You know, zooming around. So that's probably... It's probably around here. The green? Oh gosh, it's the happy sun. I'm just getting nightmares about this happy sun again. Okay, but now, now I need to be on fire? Okay. Happy sun, do your stuff. Do your stuff, happy sun. Happy sun. <laughs> Good old happy sun. Ah. Uh. Now, fortunately, we are at that time of the year where games are finally getting released, and uh, early release this year is a, uh, a new Fire Emblem, which, I don't know, it's been actually a decade since I last played the Fire Emblem. Um, okay, I just need an angry sun awkwardly here. Okay, this makes sense in my head. Hi there, happy sun. Oh, I was like, this is going to be interesting because I've got to guess the jump. Because uh, I'm going to drop down in here and then I can't, like, stay in there. I've got to actually guess. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, so the new Fire Emblem is out, um, I don't really know too much about it. And I feel like Fire Emblem is a franchise, I've never given it, like, maybe the largest chance, but I've given it a chance. I played Fire Emblem Awakening and I got most of the way through. Maybe this is what I needed, I just needed a power-up. So now you have the ability to leap tall buildings in a single bound. And you can leap off tall enemies in a single bound, which would be kind of convenient and potentially what I needed in order to 
do that one level, but I guess S1 is shining. E1 is shining. And S5 is shining. Okay. Let's take out E1 for the for the moment. So now I can just hold up and do an actual decently high jump. Hold on, we're gonna do a, a mic move. And a moment, let's there we go. Let that go. Move the mic up. There we go. Um yeah, I uh, my experience with Fire Emblem Awakening uh, is fairly simple. It's just okay. I seem to be able to charge through a lot of stuff. There's the blue key. There's the bombs, which I have yet to fully understand. Okay, that's a room. That's just there. I can slide. Is not a mystery to what was there. And I can climb back up and do it again. Oh yeah, I remember we had a had a fun mystery on like which door you go into halfway or which pipe you go down. So there's this current, which doesn't seem like you can really do anything about it. There's this door, one of the doors leads to like where the beaver was. This guy! This guy! Ah! Wait, this is gonna make so much more sense because I remember in my head I couldn't make a jump. And now my brain is like, oh look, I can just jump. I can just get the jump. So now I'm in a new area, which only works because I can jump on, you know, jump up, basically. Ooh, ooh, I see, I see. So I've got to use the fact that there is a spare enemy. And then... <laughs> My goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Did he just fall all the way back down? He, he did worse than fall all the way back down. He didn't even appear at all. Wow. Okay. Just probably took... Well, I don't know, they're probably both the same. Also, why am I throwing him up when I can just jump up with him? No, no, I want to jump off you. There you go. Boing. Okay, key. That's half the problem. Where's the chest? Off the top of my head. Okay. I don't think the chest is even in here. Because there's that key. Which you'd have to drop down from... This is a bit ominous. Oh my gosh! Alright, so there's a flashing skull. There's lots of flashing skulls. Actually, they're all flashing, really. Oh, I look at that. Look at it. He hates the lights! Oh. Is that it? You just hate all four lights? That was it. That was the whole boss. I hope you appreciate it. Can you hit four lights? <laughs> sure. Um... But yeah, I played Fire Emblem Awakening maybe 10 years ago, and I think the parts that really got to me was I liked the presentation, and I really liked how it used uh, both screens in a nice, fun way. I feel like I, I came out of um, Advance Wars, specifically Dual Strike. That was kind of the only one I had played, but that one made a lot of sense to me. Um, not the jamming music box. And, uh... Yeah, Advance Wars Dual Strike like, was like, hey, like I can really, you know, I really like this strategy game. That's kind of weird. Usually I don't like strategy games a crazy amount, but... Beneath the Waves. We're not going beneath the waves yet. Uh, we're going to... Cave of Flames. 
So it should be something just because I can jump on enemies. Like maybe coming up here, this probably looks exactly like where I need to go. This... This looks like this is the punishment because he's just gonna like do these jumps. And you're gonna not be flat, I imagine. I'm gonna get to the end and it's like... I gotta be able to eat a donut and I can keep going. Okay, but clearly I can't do anything from here, but I touched the water, I think I turned back. Nope, I sink. You sink. Oh no! I'm back up. So, okay, I need to, I need to have a donut and then fall down. And also grab the key because I haven't grabbed the key yet. Oh. Okay. And there's the donut. So I take the donut and I run left. Um, yeah, the presentation was pretty neat. Um, I don't play too many strategy games. So my experience uh, is definitely very limited. I would also say that there's a degree of um, urgency that... Uh, oh, is this like one of those like count the number of... Oh, and you can't get flattened. So I think it's like here. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I was like, you can't get flattened and you gotta make it all the way across. So... Yeah, uh... But yeah, you've got this idea of like... And, and all the Fire Emblems have this. It's a strategy game where you can't have your characters get killed. If they get killed, they permanently die and you lock yourself out of... Um, story encounters and that kind of stuff. And basically the whole game is just a bunch of like preset uh, encounters and, and stuff that you have to fight. You level up in those encounters, you get items and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, it, it, as, a, as a formula and as like an idea, I really dig it. Um, but I think it's that idea of like, if the characters die permanently, like am I missing out on stuff if they do die? And you can always, I guess, like roll back the game. I think you can roll back the game to various points, but inevitably, there we go. Oh my gosh, it's a car? Is that a car or is that a couch? I don't think that one did anything. No, not really. This is one of those. Let's go in here. I'm pretty sure this is, this will be, yeah, this will be the blue one. Um... Yeah, I, uh, I'm not too sure if it's just, like, me panicking or me, like, kind of worrying that I'm not gonna really, like, have, you know, the ability to really beat the game, I guess. But, I should give it another go. Oh, and I'm gone. I'm gone. I should give it another go, because, like, you know, clearly you are gonna lose stuff. And I've played games, I mean, <laughs> Resident Evil was a perfect example of, like, I've played games where you are totally going to lose, you know, resources and materials. You're going to make mistakes, and the game is designed around you taking those mistakes. So, I'm curious if, like, oh, like, Fire Emblem is like that, and it's just me getting worried. So, I'm, I don't need to go in here. Uh, that is the top door. It's not really anything other than the coins that chilling over there, so... I like how you can also just high jump out of these kind of water pits. You just be like, eh, I don't care. Uh, that this is this is the regular way to do the level. This is the great thing. We want the blue. Okay, well that that indicates the red, but this jump also indicates blue. It feels like a very high jump. Okay, Donkey Kong Barrel. Guys, he's gonna make me fat. This is... Oh, that's a... That's a gnarly go. Okay. Oh, I've got to break another one and then reveal the yarn. Okay. I, I assume I'm not gonna fall down there and 
Sorry. Yep. Okay. Uh... But yeah, and I guess the other thing with Fire Emblem is that maybe it's got that kind of reactionary um, aspect of like, oh, do you like do you hate sword fighters and Super Smash Brothers? If you like Fire Emblem, you're contributing to the problem. It's like, yeah, okay, sure, I guess. Um, oh, cool, cool. I'm thinking I've got to bounce off this. Have it lined up, and then I can bounce off at the right height. There you go. Oh boy, I hope you can hear that truck air braking outside. What a wonderful sound. Um, but yeah, it actually kind of feels good to talk about video games. Uh, because uh, there's too many... Uh, there's, one, there's a bit too much drama in the world, and then on top of that, there's too, like many... well, there's not enough video games coming out, like, just this very recently, because it's the beginning of the year, and, uh, it takes a bit of time. Once they rush for that November release, they're just kind of meander around. Alright, yawn me up, boy. Ah. And this should lead me right to... oh, to nowhere. That was not what I expected. Okay, I've I've got to clear out a bit more a bit more stuff apparently. Um, but yeah, I feel like uh, if I was to say what kind of game have I been playing, I've still been playing Gran Turismo 4. That's been just my my dedicated game and and a bit of Switch Sports. But other than that, that's pretty much the two for my Gran Turismo. I have uh, done half the endurance events, which fortunately for whoever made the retro achievement set is all the re uh, the, um, the, uh, endurance events he really expects. He's just like, no, nah, you don't have to, like, you know, do the 24-hour events in one go. He, he only expects, like, the two hours and then, awkwardly, one of the races in the 1,000 miles championship. But it's like, yeah, you know, that grants me the ability to do a save and then and then, uh, leave for the moment, or, you know, log off and come back in. Which is very nice of him, so... Beneath the waves! Look at this, a new level! There's probably a handful of new levels still sitting there as well. All these waves. This is probably what they meant by beneath the waves, because that's li oh, oh my gosh, that's literally the only thing Let's hit five cents. Or tons. That's probably five tons, not five cents. I think the bubble the bubble bursts when you get out, but I guess I can just hop out. So This is a lucky dip jump, isn't it? Obviously the answer is the third one. It's always the third one. Alright. How do I line this up right? Maybe I should just go off any of them. That's how you do it. That's how you totally do it. You just destroy them immediately. Uh, but... Yeah, I would like to, to keep trying out maybe some, some more franchises and stuff. I guess Persona 3 had... Uh, their super release. What is that one? Fourth from the right. So right here. Oh. Trying to get the jump just right. There you go. Alright, so that's the key. Where's the chest? Maybe the other side of the lake? Maybe? I swam to the other side of the lake. I didn't see anything on the upper end. So, uh, middle of the lake, I'd imagine. And then there's a door there. Oh, and you could do this, can't you? Uh. <laughs> I 
Okay, I can't swim up into that. I can do this. I think there's a gap. There's just like a gap here. Nope. Still not good enough. Going around, I'm going up, going around. Um, I feel like there's a possibility to swim down and right enough to, to make that work. Um, but yeah, I, Persona 3 Portable came out, and to me, I'm like, hey, I would love to play Persona 3. And then uh, the only thing is, uh, this version is the PSP version, which is not a bad version. Uh, but it's not the PS2 version. It lacks certain presentation aspects of the PS2 version. Um, and I feel like, and on top of that, it, it lacks the whole kind of epilogue kind of story, which people, I think, say is controversial, so... Who knows, but uh, the portable version has a female protagonist, and it also has a few uh, quality of life features, like you can uh, control your party members, uh, directly rather than have to issue them rough tactics to, to fight with. But from uh, my understanding as well, there's also some bits where they changed UI because it was on the PSP and they needed to make things a bit more clearer. So, um, which uh, is probably a controversial move because it's like, this is, that looks like it's gone just to another bit. Like I just need to go somewhere over here. And then just like roll or something. This is. Oh. Oh. Um. And I guess that's always like an interesting thing about like what is the definitive version of any video game. Uh, I'm usually under the impression of like, hey, like, you know, all versions of games get preserved and there's usually a, uh, a good degree of. Uh, you know, the game isn't gonna... Or rather... I don't know how to phrase it. Like, uh... You know, like, Wario Land 3 isn't gonna disappear, because, uh... This version of Wario Land 3 exists around lots of... Lots of circles. We'll just say. Um... Persona 3, same deal. There's... Uh, all, all of our versions of Persona are probably preserved for... For a long time. Um... But that being said... If you don't own a copy of Persona... Well, is this... The best way to play it is that is for the blue chest. Why am I finding all the other chests? So, oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Interesting that like the other chests are just like all there. But I was just thinking. Oh, well, I need the, I need the second one. So. Um. There we go. I was thinking, it's like, wait a minute, I saw the chest over there, why am I going all the way out of the way to get that, when really, you should have rolled. You just gotta roll, so. Oh my gosh. Is that a detonator? Or is it a rubber stamp? No, it's a detonator. Oh no! I've just destroyed the cave. And the swamp. And the hole. Cool. I love destroying things. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh... The definitive version of, of some games. I feel like the PC grants the opportunity for... You know, the PC to be the definitive version, or the Xbox to be the definitive version. It, 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 like, I feel like a high amount of effort will obviously result in, you know, something like, uh, Power Slave, for example. Which, uh, we'll, we'll get to that some, someday. Um, but, like, that's, that is a specific thing where if you, if it, you play the, the PC, uh, specifically the Steam version from Night Dive, I think, actually last year. Um, that version of the game takes 
the level concepts of both the Saturn version and the, uh, the PlayStation version, because there's a bit of mechanics of both, it combines them into some kind of super version of the game, uh, which incorporates aspects of all of them. And in fact, a lot of Night Dive, and in fact, a lot of Samuel Villarreal's uh, ports, are effectively that. They are, um, basically the best kinds of components from all the versions of the games put together. Um, Doom 64 is kind of like that. It's got, you know, added kind of features um, from his Doom 64 EX port. Uh, didn't necessarily have to do that, you know, but sure, okay. And that makes it a much better version of the game than uh, what is easily a lazy job of I'm just going to release an N64 emulator and call it a day. And uh, I think one thing with the Persona 3 Portable is that uh, it seems obvious, you know, after it's come out, that uh, I know I did, I went this way to get the, I think, the red coin before. Okay, well I broke one and that's all that matters. Actually, this would have been for the regular one, so like, where were the bombs? The bombs must have been in like some other room. So, like, what other room is there? I remember there being something up here. <laughs> Maybe I should have actively like, not ignored this bit. Oh boy, what? What was that? referring to? Was that a grey chess key? Was that a grey key? Grey coin? Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously Persona 3 Portable, they've taken the PSP version and they've just slapped it onto the other consoles. Um, which is neat in the fact that that is actually what they've done. Are there bombs here? And why is there a bar here? Well, I guess there's a pipe here, so maybe I should just address the pipe and figure out where to go from here. Scientist, do I need to block a light anywhere? I need to get set on fire. And go up. There's a green key, so... This is a, this is an interesting conundrum right here. Um, on top of that as well, obviously you may be going, well, isn't the PSP only 424 by 270 pixels? Uh, to which I go, is that actually it? Like, was that actually the resolution? That's an interesting one to remember, but you know, that makes sense. Um, so it's like, oh, like, oh, this is going to be a real iffy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is going to be real iffy. Because you're going to nail all these jumps while invisible. Um, and your punishment is kind of gnarly as well. Uh, so yeah, so what they did was they just kind of HQ2X'd a bunch of textures and called it a day. And, uh, to me, I kind of go, okay, that's a bit lazy. And on top of that, like, a HQ2X job doesn't feel like, uh, really a remaster. It just kind of feels like, you know, the bare minimum. Uh, and it's not even the bare minimum. It's a not particularly great job. Like, I could run an emulator and do the HQ2X myself. Uh, I don't think it's particularly worth it to pay for a port just to get it HQ2X, basically. Have the textures upscaled. Um, I feel like, yeah, there's a degree of like, ah, oh, but like, you want to play this game, and this is how it's preserved, and that makes sense, but... Am I good? Am I good? Nope. Oh, like... Okay, so now I've got to time it in the right spot as well. That seems a bit brutal. This run seems to go on forever. Especially when you goof it up like that. Cool. Um, but yeah, like, like, I feel like there is a degree of... You know, it's a HD re remaster of the game. There's, it serves two purposes. Basically, to just get money of like, oh, you've got this on this console now. Ah, oh, dang it! You've got this on this console now. 
And then also it's like to, to get, you know, maybe people who have never played the game before to suddenly buy it. People who have played the game before to, I guess, rebuy it. I don't know if, how much of their, you know, market they are. Especially people who have played Persona 3 FES and prefer Persona 3 FES. I guess the director is like, hey, you should play Portable because it's got a second story. But I don't know, like, there is no definitive version of the game in my eyes, I guess. Because these are both competing definitive versions. Both on a mechanical and a presentation level. Neither one necessarily has all the components, they're just... all... bits put together. I've still gotta be invisible. Wow. This is, this is a... an obstacle course and a half, I'll tell you that. Get out of my way! I do remember this game getting very, like, not obtuse, because none of it is, like, tr hard puzzles, but I, I'm remembering how, like, kind of devilish it all gets, because now I've got to do these jumps while trying to guess, because it's not like I'm invisible to anyone else. And I've, I've cut a nail of a roll as well. At least I don't have to do it while I'm invisible. Right. Right. So, um, so I feel like, ideally, if you're a game publisher, what do you do? So, if I want to, I want to HD remaster a game, what do you do? First of all, put in the time and make it run well. And make it, like, properly presented for a higher resolution display. It doesn't have to be actually upscaled or anything. Some people like the retro look a bit. If the retro look is all you have, Commit to the retro look. Don't HQ to exit. I feel like that never works out. I've never seen a game that's been HQ to X that actually looks good. So just don't. Just, just, just don't. Uh, now that I've got, oh, there were bombs down here, weren't there? Like down here, this was where all the bombs were. So now I should. Well, now there's gaps here. There's key, so I know I'm in the right spot. Okay, but now I gotta go down, I guess. That's the whole reason of why. Okay, he's <laughs> sonic booming. Oh, there's. I must free my boys. Okay. I must free my boys in a different way. Oh! We could just kill them all, apparently. Um, but yeah, yeah, put in the effort, game publishers. I, I like, I implore you. There, there are so many lazy re-releases. There, are, there are. It's just baffling how many there are. And and let's let's add Glover to the. Oh my gosh, front facing warrior, front facing warrior. Oh no. Uh, but there are so many, like, bafflingly, just lazy HD remasters, um, and then you've got good ones. I think people really enjoy the Destroy All Humans remaster that came out very recently. Maybe even particularly the second one. Okay, so now there's gonna be a way, I guess, to go up the right instead of uh, left. Matt, you are going the wrong way, my, my fellow shrimp boy. Okay. Come on, come on. Oops. Get me, there you go. Um, but yeah, number two. Uh, don't push yourself to add more features. Because at the end of the day, people are buying the game because they never got to play it in the past. Just because you have the opportunity to add more features doesn't necessarily mean you do have to. I think all people want is the best version of the game. And being the same mechanics as the previous version, warts and all, if I max out my coins at 999, it's... Tornado, bag, it is now... I have now captured the air. And wah! The infinite bag of winds has revealed... 
<laughs> there were butterflies on the first level. Did you realize that? Let's go into the hole as well. Just so I can get that one out of the way. Um, this is the last one in this level as well. That's kind of interesting, considering level one, literally, like, I'm going back. Hi there, Mr. Al. How you doing? Okay, so... Where do I need to go? That We've gone over there. This looks like I need to roll into that. But it could also be I just gotta go up. I've done the minigame clear. That's also a roll, but I've actually done the roll. Done the strong... Oh, I guess I'm just going up now. I don't think I've rolled in that direction. That makes me think, like, where? Oh, it's the bomb, the bomb place. I'm an idiot. There's, there's a bomb up here, and now I've taken out the bomb, so therefore this whole platform has fallen down. Duh. It makes more sense in my head. We've got the snake. The snake is back. He is just chilling. He's vibing. So we're gonna use Fire Blast, though. Um. But yeah, don't have to add more features, really. All it has to do is just be playable on reasonably, like, you know, abstract hardware in the future. So, okay, so that's the chest. What's over here on the right? Because there's obviously more room over here. More snakes. Close one. There, oh, there we go. Um, number three as well. Uh, don't price it like a full game. This, this partially ties into the whole don't like try and over design things. Don't like add way too much. Just put in the effort to, to do that. Now, this does mean what do you do about games where the source code is not available? To which I go, just do it again. Make it accurate. Find something that allows you to make the accuracy as best as possible. Because no one, like, I feel like there is a degree of, okay, you could, you could as well, like, full-on remake a game. And there are some remasters that actually are just remakes of the game, and obviously the Destroy All Humans one is a perfect example, because it's like, they just remade it on the Unreal Engine. And they got to reuse, you know, assets, audio, um, music. Uh, back to N1, here we go. Um, they got to reuse that kind of stuff, but it's like, okay, well, like, assets and code. This seems like I've just never done this in a while. Cool. Ah, oh, I caught it. No. Dang it, now I've got to tread more, work my way out. Um... But, yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, like, I don't necessarily need the game to be, because, I, I mean, in the same way, we all played Doom 64. Doom 64 was seven and a half Australian dollars, probably five US dollars. And it's like, it still feels, hey, you know what they did? They, well, one, they, they paid a guy to officially license, like, a mod, but that's okay. It's more the fact of, like, oh my god, they're going to crash my eye. Oh, I'm like trying to blink and rub my eye with one hand, and it's the jumping button. Um, but it's more the fact... Greetings, Bob. Uh, the conversation of today is uh, the ideal, I guess, HD remaster of anything, really. Um, oh, I've got to I've got to jump on leaves. Okay, so I can jump all the way over here. I'm worried I'm about to get to where the chest is. Um, but yeah, the ideal- there's the chest. <laughs> cool. Uh, the ideal HD remaster, uh, the, the two steps I've read out so far have been, um, pretty much, uh, like, 
don't like, uh, well, ma make it as functional as possible. Don't try and like tack on anything more to it. And then, um, and on top of that, uh, like you don't have to invent more, you know, mechanics or gameplay or like here's like lost levels or anything. But it's got to be the definitive version of the game. If you've got multiple versions of the game, combine them together, do something, or pick the best parts. Uh, or pick the best version. That's that's a way to like not offend anyone. Um, okay, I'm probably just going to come back into that room a bit later, because that's the chest I need. Probably got a ground pound in here, because... When was the last time I've gone to this level? That's the silver coin. That is... A really not useful thing to tell me that this that there's a that the silver coin is there. Okay. Okay, that's the green key, and I just I think I just destroyed the enemy that requires me to jump. Um, and then uh, yeah, number two is uh, like don't like spend too much effort inventing like uh, or like. <laughs> HQ2Xing, like, upscaling, doing, like, whatever. There's just some things that just, they don't sell. They don't, like, really do anything. HQ2X doesn't seem quite right, so I'd probably say, you know, best case, you know, use higher quality original assets if, if that's available. Age of Empires 2, 2013, and Definitive Edition, both games uh, expand a lot, and the community loves it. I, I am perfectly fine with that as, um, you know, like, I actually, actually I, I, I'll, I'll take it back. I am perfectly fine with games adding in more content. Um, because, like, it's more just like, I don't think they should strive to do that. I think they should get the core right. Um, the thing I'm talking about is, uh, I guess, in particular, there's Persona 3 Portable, which ha now has a Steam release and is on the, the consoles as well. And it's just like, is Persona 3 Portable the definitive version of Persona 3, or is it Persona 3 FES on the PS2? Age of Mythology Extended Edition is the opposite though, where they didn't add anything, I guess. It's Flubber, or Flippers. Add a new DLC that was terrible. Ah, okay. Okay, so now I have Flippers that I think these Flippers allow me to fight the current. Which means suddenly now I gotta think of all these levels that have currents in them. And kind of like unthink them. Which fortunately is N4. And S4. And W5. Your game gets worse if you have the DLC installed. I, I want to say that's like the payday approach as well. Um, where it's just like, hey, I could, I could do without some of these like new mechanics. All my homies hate having to deal with a swap van. So HD remake of Age of Mythology from the 2010s is 90% positive of Steam. The DLC they released is 35%. Yeah, I can make this guy jump, but like, what's the point? Perhaps as well, that is the blue key, and I've still yet to get the green. Actually, I must have gone in there before, so... I just need to fight currents, that's really it, so... Look at this! Wow. Um... But yeah, there's definitely a lot of examples of, like, bad HD remasters. Um... And on top of that, I'm a... Uh, ooh! Uh, Sonic uh, Origins is a great example. Because it's like... They've never... HD remastered Sonic. They've always just had kind of normal ports of it? in ways, or like, kind of remade them in, in just like, a fancier engine, but they've never like, you know, tried to do the, the actual HD treatment, which is kind of admirable. Actually, that reminds me of like, Super Mario All-Stars basically being like, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, just have it in a better engine and have it kind of look a bit better. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Sonic Origins, uh, no one likes it. Because they charge more money, and including me, I hate this idea, they charge more money to play these less expandable versions of the game, uh, Oblivion, 
Uh, have they ever... I mean, I guess Force Armor has been an example of something that has uh, never... Sky... Oh yeah, Sky Blivin has a release date. So that's a recre... Is, is it actually like a recreation of Oblivion? Or is it its own kind of mod that takes place in Oblivion in the Skyrim engine, which seems great until I realized that Skyrim came out like 11 and a, and a quarter years ago. It's been a while. It's a full recreation of the book. Ah, okay. So they take all the, the audio assets and then they just and kind of recreate the models. Okay, okay, okay. Now's my chance. Now's my chance. Oh my gosh. What do I do here? Oh, it's gonna get me. Dang it. That is pretty neat, though. Um, I would always love for, like, uh, if anyone could ever do that for, like, Pokemon, recreate uh, gold and silver in the, uh, like, the Ruby Sapphire engine, for example. It'd be kind of interesting if you could. Oh, I'm over the hurdle. I'm over the hurdle. Okay. Fire and Leaf Green were amazing remakes. They were! All of... All of those remakes from uh, Game Freak in that period were just like real outstandingly like... fresh remakes. Um, and then uh... <laughs> Actually, I don't think like... Well... Diamond Pearl remakes were kind of a cash grab, weren't they? They're just gonna outsource it to another studio, and the other studio literally made it point for point. I'm pretty sure they maintain, like, certain glitches as well. Which just doesn't seem intentional. There's so many Pokemon releases, I don't know how to, like, keep up with them. Oh my gosh. So there's the key. Oh. I'm gonna hope- okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's an interesting thing as well, is that, like, clearly, like, those remakes, they're not HD remasters because they're not in HD, except for, I guess Diamond Pearl actually is, but, uh, for, for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it's take the original game's, like, you know, framework, the Pokemon you go, like, you, you find the places you visit, and expand on that. And they've kind of kept that up in a few other games. Uh, the problem with the remakes was that they completely ignored all the additions and improvements from Planet for the Ring. That is true. And actually, that was one thing for, um, uh, Hog and Soul Silver is that there's definitely, like, a bit of place where this is a, like... Oh, is this, like, super current? This is super current. Wow. I mean, I'm a bit of a purist. I keep playing, like, the originals. Oh, it's a boss. Oh, it's a fish. And there's a Yanma. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Okay. Oh, okay. I've got to I've got to ride the Yanma and then probably jump on that guy to feed him cheese. This is a very Earthworm Jim boss, isn't it? Uh, even though I was still enjoying Pokémon, uh at that time, uh, my opinion, Gold and Silver were my favorite against it, then I know that Gen 3 is my favorite. I think one thing I like about Pokemon is that everyone has their favorites. Okay, so he's eating his cheese. Now what? A few cheese. Oh, I just need to keep feeding him cheese, I guess. And he gets slower, so... He struggles to eat the cheese later. There you go. Oh, I get it. And then, and then he blocks the water. And then I use the Yanma to get back in it. Both Gen Three games as well as the remake of Gen One. That de that generation is definitely really really good though. Um, yeah, I guess on the topic of the remaster, there's like there was a lot of like just additions in in all three of those remakes. Um, there's like whole plot lines, uh, Ruby Sapphire, oh sorry, um, Fire Red Leaf Green has this whole Sapphire Islands business. 
got a scarecrow. He's scary. It's hard to decouple my liking of generation from my age. Yeah, maybe for me as well. Look at that, the scarecrow is building a fence. What does this mean? This is going to be the most abstract thing I just unlocked. S3. And N5. Wow. Okay. I guess I could do N5 right now since I'm right here. Like how much I was... Uh, how old I was hugely affected, how much I enjoyed them. Yeah, I think so. Um, I guess, like, there is a degree of, like, nostalgia. Sup, Mr. Crypt? How's it going? There's a degree of nostalgia that I think always plays into, like, some of the games we enjoy. But I also feel like it is partially because they're good. Like, I'm... I'm getting some mates who have never played Pokemon before to play them because, like, they are a bit timeless. Even if it does seem that maybe it is a generational thing, it's like, there are quite a lot of, like, interest in playing the older Pokemon. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? I can't break through these. Um, and even the remakes, I feel like knowing the remakes Pretty much the only generation that's like a bit tricky to get into is first gen. Um, I feel like I can kind of play it on a on a whim because it's just like how how many times I played it as a kid. Okay, this is oh this is this is not the last treasure here. I'm looking for a fence, a fence that got built up. Uh, talking about HJ remasters, uh, do the crazy mods from Morrowind count that turn into almost like an early 2010s game in terms of graphics? Um, I guess I, I'm thinking more just like official HD remasters of games and in particular uh, I guess ones that end up getting sold. Also by the way, uh, another tip, if, if it does get sold, price needs to be like half the price of a new game. It, seem, it seems like, oh you're putting all this effort, but it's just like, unless you're doing like an actual real full reimagining, like it's sometimes a bit baffling for some of these games to come out. like. 70, 80 bucks, and they were handheld games from 10 years ago that just got released on PC. Like, that seems a bit crazy. I feel like uh, there's a bit of high tide that would come in, so I'm gonna back to the map. Um, honestly, Fire and Leaf Green was so good, I would recommend them over the original gen 95% of the time. Um, yeah, they're definitely really good. Oh, I thought the. <laughs> yeah, 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 it goes high tide. Does it? No, because that, that room's all, uh, already there, and this one is... Yeah, no, this is... this floats up. Yeah. Yeah, this is where I need to go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um... Uh, for Gen 2, I might also recommend the remakes of the original, even though I never finished the remake, and the original holds a place in my heart. Well, uh, for someone who's played both, I would say it really depends on who you are. Gonna dodge the hummingbirds. Whoa. I gotta keep it together. Do I have to keep it together for... Whoa. Just keep going in the doors, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like the the idea of like a, a, a remaster mod also kind of is valid. I mean, I mentioned Doom 64 EX as an example, and it's like, that's an unofficial HD remake of a Nintendo 64 game that was so good that Bethesda paid the guy to just release it normally. So, that's that's a, that's a great job there. Um, and I feel like there are some games that will eternally stay in uh, the limbo of HD... I fell. Where's the... The key! I have not picked up the key yet. I was about to walk into the chest. So I was about to encounter hard heartbreak anyways. Yeah, where, where am I going here? So, um... This just kind of like wandered around, didn't it? This didn't. 
there wasn't any key actually in this direction. This well, that's that's where I exited. And then this is over the pit. I played Gen 1 when I was between 6 and 8 years old, roughly, and Gen 2 when I was between 8 and 10. Yeah, I feel like the age, like, somewhat kind of indicates what which ones you did play, but doesn't necessarily full-on decide it. Um, I guess that's the big thing about, like, HD remasters, is that, like, they're also, like, growingly irrelevant. Like, once you do a HD remaster on kind of Windows, and it's good, and it satisfies people, this is a different room. Because this whole area is different. So therefore, that is just the start. I just jump back to the start. Where's the key? Where's the key hiding? Okay. Okay. Yep. The heartache. The key is over here. Gen 3 came out. I was 10. I played it until 14. Uh, I've got to get up here. There we go. Uh, I was 14. Then Diamond Pearl came out. I continued playing Gen 3 well into being 16 and 17, even though I also liked and played Gen 4. What? <laughs> Don't fall off. Including a remake of Gen 1. Yeah, okay. I gotta go in here. Uh, not die, basically. Oop. Don't fall down. It's kind of weird that the key is like all the way up there. Because nothing like crazy indicates that like you have to go over there. And especially like if you come to this level at a kind of weird time, you can get the key, but. <laughs> this fence just hasn't been built. Which is a little confusing. Okay, actually doing this now. Threading the needle, basically. Selling the, the kitchen sink. Um, that's another super good HD remake. Um, yeah, I, I, I am literally gonna, like, just Shout out every single like Samuel Villarreal remaster because that guy is an absolute like god. I love him. I want to meet him. Samuel, if you're watching, hook me up. Uh, so I played the original Gen 1 when I was a little kid. When I played Gen 2, this magical time when you were no longer a little kid but still far from being a teenager. Bro, I think I played Gen 4 when I was that. <laughs> That's how I am ancient. Uh. Well, you said you played Gen 2 when you were... Yeah, 8 and 10. That seems like... Maybe I'm not the ancient one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but... Okay. Dodge the bird. Gotta watch out for this guy. Then there's another one. That's, that's a bit nasty, that like you just have to trigger him and walk back. There we go. And then Gen 3 and Gen 1 remake of the typical time you start to properly use your head and tend to remember it as a major core of your childhood. I mean, I remember Gen 1 as like a major part of my childhood. Um, just because that was like... Like, I had a Game Boy, I had Super Mario Brothers, and I had Pokemon. And that was it. That was what I enjoyed. That was what I played. I'm a fan of this, by the way. Okay, W4. Okay, back to W4, I guess. Uh, or I could do W5, because I remember that was like glowing earlier. Um, specifically because now I can fight the waves. So there must be something where I can actually fight the waves. Like here. These waves are no match for me. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? No, I want to go up. I want to go up. Um, oh. Do 
Do I have the ability to pick up large enemies? No. This feels kind of weird, because, like, I swear... I swear I had the ability to. Like, specifically, uh... Yeah, this. So you can charge... Bricks. You can bump into the big ones. You can knock the big enemies. You can slide down big slopes. Which also knocks big enemies. And breaks the big blocks. Not the physical blocks. Was that it? Was that the whole explanation? I, I swear, like, you could pick up large enemies. I, I, keep, I keep pressing A to, like, click on the tutorial and then it's just like, nope. So this picks up big enemy- or well, small enemies. Cause yeah, I'm in a room with a big enemy. That's the kind of symbol I want- I, I'm seeing. They gotta tell me that big enemies are just no-go, or like... Or they're just gonna do the same tutorial on small enemies again. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm just going mad. I'm literally just going mad. I'm looking at this going, yeah. Like, there's a guy who makes me bounce. Unless I can, like, shove him into that wall. That's what makes me think, like, something's weird, because there's a... There's a growing, like, area of... Like, things, like, I'm just not figuring out. What's going on? I think the age 10 to 15, 16 is more impressive in my mind in terms of significance for what I did in that time, because I had a much wider range of choice of what to do when, than when I was younger. Uh, so whatever I did was more deliberate than before. I think that's right. Like, I mean, granted, like, we'll all remember kind of, like, our recent periods a bit more than later stuff. Yeah, but again, it's like, this is just gonna lead me to, like, where the... Oh, what? Did they just red herring me? They actually red herringed me. They actually red herringed me. The key was completely just on a different door. Wow. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, I, I feel like I probably remember a bit more in my teens as well, compared to, like, when I was much younger. But I do remember enjoying different kinds of experiences when I was younger, and then being a bit of a spoiled brat about it. Um... So me playing Emerald is a lot more meaningful than me playing Silver. I guess for me as well, like, I don't know, I've kind of documented a lot of the games I played when I was, uh, 12 and onwards. Such as, <laughs> literally this one. Um... Okay, I did hop up here before. And I know I just got a key. This is just to get a key. So I've got the red key. And there's just something towards the center again. I'd argue, uh... My younger year... Oh, duh! The... Yeah, the chest is just in the top right room. Uh, playing, uh... My younger years is what I chose to do in my teens. Younger years certainly shaped what to do in my teens. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I mean, we're all kind of bags of experiences in the end, though. You know? What we do one year kind of tells us what we want to do the next year and so on. Then one on Gen 2, I left a big impression. It's a lot simpler now that I remember that the chest was just in that direction, really. 
Oh my goodness, I still have very clear memories of specific parts of the games and how young me interacted with them. Yeah, I I mean, me as a kid, I remember enjoying Rayman Raving Rabbids way more than me trying to let's play it back in 2016. E.g. the journey from the first to second arena in Gen 1, uh, for the first time that happened when I was 6-something years old. That blew my mind as well, to be honest. Oh, W4 is where I need to go, yeah. Okay, so. Two chests. Something happened when I was... That happened when I was six-something years old. I feel like I've gone into this level like so many times, but it has to be just twice. I guess we're at that point where it's like, eh, most levels I've probably gone into, and then there's just occasionally a new level. But now it's like, now the game's really opened up. I've got most of the abilities. It's just, what contextual things have I unlocked that help me out? So like, I can go in here, can't type for a bit, so I might reply to something you say now, quite a bit later, that's okay. Okay, I don't think I'm really getting anywhere in this room. Zombie. Same deal again, I don't think there's really- oh my gosh. I don't think there's really anything in any of these rooms that I'd need. Is this- which room was this one going into? The- the boss room. Do I legitimately have to just- just, just defeat me now, Mr. Man? Now you get to see what happens when you die. I'm amazed that you got to fight this boss again. It's the slowest boss to exit from as well. The, the slowest boss to finish. The slowest boss to exit. So three out of three, what happens? Oh, up you go. Up you go, hallway. Okay. And yeah, that's okay, I don't want to go into that guy. I don't want to go fight him. Let me just go down here and exit. Oh, it's so slow. The punishment, man. The punishment for not knowing where I'm going. And I've got to push the box. Push the... Yeah. But yeah, as a, as I guess a, a guidance on where I'm going in this, I have a list of... I don't have a list of all the items I've got, but I'll find out soon enough. I know I have probably not gotten 25, uh, or anywhere close to 25, yet in this stream. Um, okay, so I went up all the way here, and then that's just where the thing to fall is. But there's clearly a bit to drop off in the middle there. If you saw that. And that's what makes me think, like, oh, have I already fully explored pretty much the entirety of, like, this half of the level, and now it's like, now I can do a tall jump and there's just more level over there. That's kind of the beauty and also the, uh, the, the daunting aspect of this game is that, uh, inevitably, and this is still required, I think, I'm pretty sure you need this. Not getting these jumps, I tell you. Uh, and on top of that, the game gets more punishing with its, uh, with how it knocks you out. That seems to be the, or not knocks you out, but like on your way to work your way, blah, on your attempts to g regain where you were, to get back where you were. There's a lot of just getting, <laughs> working your way back, I guess. This is just platforms. This was always here. There you go. Well. Uh, am I an idiot? Am I an idiot because I've completely forgotten how the game works? 
I feel like I've completely forgotten how the game works because this is the second time I've encountered the frog. And it's just like, yeah, nah. Frog, I guess. Yeah, this is just ground pounding. This is like... Nothing... Too weird, right? I'm thinking, again, I can't take this... I can't continue on. I'm thinking like, there's just... There's just an item I'm lacking. And it's just like... I don't know. But the game's telling me I can go in that direction, apparently. Apparently, so... S4, the steep canyon! Very bizarre that I'm just... Yeah, unable to continue. In some of these levels. I'm not going insane, right? The game was prompting to go in that direction, and I was just like, no, 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 you can't really. Whoop. Gotta watch out for the hands, although I think I could probably jump out of all of water now. So... Yeah, that's that frog again, but that one, that's fine, because I could just jump over him. And this is a room that was just here for a coin? I guess I could just swim all the way to the other side and see what it, what it was about. They thought of everything. Or have they? Okay, it's a new room. It's green. It goes up. It goes vertically. Oh. Yeah, that works too. Alright. Boing, boing. Cool. I need the key. Oh, there's the key up here. Ow, we got this owl. Okay, well, I can guarantee the owl is the key to salvation here, but, uh... Oh boy, I do remember this room off the top of my head. This room... Oh boy. This would have been the joy of a, of a safe setting. 1DB. So, so many pitfalls, so many traps. Okay, there's the key. Hello, type again, how are you doing? <laughs> I got you there, I got you on the... the meme. Oh, that's right where the red key is, okay. Cool, just, just swim past and I should be able to... get back to where the, the green chest was. There we go. So you said, uh, so what you said made me realize this is kind of like a Metroidvania game. Like, a little bit, a little bit. I guess... Metroidvania is always a weird term for me because it's like, there's a lot of connotations, I guess, of the Castlevania aspect. Because it's got RPG leveling and and items and equipment. Um, this, I'd say much more Metroid in the sense of you gain abilities and items and you've, you kind of open up parts and then you return back to old areas and levels. Um, so yeah, just with areas connected over a world map instead of, yeah, instead of like level based. Uh, kinds of stuff. Yeah, I don't know if any Castlevania games do the level approach, um, where you return to old levels with newer items. I'm not too sure if they have that. But I know that, like, there are also Castlevanias. I mean, Castlevania 3 is a great example of one where it's like, you have to, um, well, not you have to, but, uh, you're encouraged to play the game multiple times and unlock, well, go, go through different pathways in successive playthroughs. Uh, kind of reminds me of Star Fox in that one. Where it's like Star Fox has a lot more to the game than just... You know, the main set of levels that you might do on your first go. Uh, Order of Ecclesia does it. One of the best handheld Castlevanias. See now, my, my knowledge of Castlevania exists only to like the first three and Symphony of the Night, and I played a little bit of Rondo of Blood. Okay, so, through the door, and then I assume it's something that unlocks more? So 
I know I went up here and it's like you had to work your way to destroy the bit on the left. Zombies. Zombonies. Mm-hmm. Bamboos. Caught the donut with my face. Gotta try Aria Sorry. Oh, I have tried. I have played Aria Sorry. Sorry, my bad. It's the Game Boy Advance one, but I have not played Dawn of Sorrow. The three best Castlevania games. Do I actually have to do the donut drop? I know I did this last stream. I I keep forgetting everything I did last week. Dawn of Sorrow is like a better Aria Sorrow. It's been ages since I played Aria Sorrow, I cannot remember like a ton about it. I do remember a big, uh, kind of zombie ball. Uh, Order of Ecclesia is pretty hardcore. Everyone likes a good hardcore game. Again, I'm thinking like, is this just to get to the red chest again? Am I just wandering to the red chest? There's, there's perhaps uh, too much ground for one to remember. Like, this game takes several hours, and it's just like it requires you to just fully remember everything. Uh, it's one of those where you can level up and stuff. It's the hardest of all the Castlevanias where you can level up, as far as I know. Interesting. I know Symphony of the Night is like not too bad until you're trying to do like proper challenge runs. Yeah, oh, uh, that is just for the red chest. So I did all of that just to go there. There's almost no bosses. You can just brute force. I feel like some purist out there is gonna go like, what do you mean you can't like dodge roll the bosses? Die too quickly for that, and I have too much HP. Because I feel like the original Castlevania is like, it's right on that line where you can, with enough skill, not take damage. Enough skill. The game, the game is like, butt tricky to never take damage. But you know, with enough patience, uh, you have to properly dodge and use your skill to beat bosses. Which is kind of, I guess, like, how it should be anyways. Like, regardless of... The, um... Yeah. But we got, we got, I mean... I feel like RPG leveling is maybe... It's not a crux, that's, that's a... Bad way of saying it, but it's like... It is a way to kind of encourage people to just, like... Have an alternative way if you're finding it's a bit too difficult, but uh, then also balancing out with like, well, how much grinding do you legitimately enjoy? Okay, I gotta dodge stuff, dodging stuff. Oh, I have eaten this. That's okay as long as I don't drop off a ledge. Uh, well, for example, in RSR, you certainly can brute force through many bosses. That is true, and and I feel like you can. Yeah, you can't just RPG level through a lot of that game. And there's a lot of, uh, abilities. Oh, I legitimately need to donut down there. Or well, apple, I guess. It's an apple in these parts, these parts of town. Oh gosh, he's, he's burning the fat. He's giving me the, the, the Turbo Jenny Craig. Okay, so that's the key. That is a door. Is the chest just... No, nope, that's not the chest. That's just a coin, so... Chest might be further up here. Oh, I'm falling. I'm falling fairly far. <laughs> so I get for a large... This is probably one of the largest areas in the game. Just maps. Map size. It feels large. I always find that's like super impressive about the Game Boy Color. 
It's just that, like, games like this are presented in a rather kind of... I guess, yeah, it's fairly pristine. Like, it is still 8-bit, but it's like, there's enough colors. There's no, like, weird noise around the screen. The design feels fairly, like, natural. Like, that's that's the best part about the... Um... Like, the Game Boy Color. I will forever flush about the Game Boy Color. Or oh, gush, rather. Flush... Flush is a... What's a term for, like, um... Like a, a, a Freudian... A Freudian slip. But, like, it's... Toilet-based. Uh... Late Game Boy Color games were closer... I'd say all Game Boy Color games were closer to GBA games than GB games. Because Game Boy Color was 1998, so... Uh, okay, so I guess now I go to... Where do I go? I guess I go to... Oh, I, I'm going east. Sorry. Oh, like, you got a lot of great, like, Game Boy Color games. Uh, even near the... I mean, Warrior Land 2 is a perfect example of, like... That's just right when the Game Boy Color turns out. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd even say in terms of technical execution. Lots of early Game Boy Color games were not sophisticated. I, I, I'd, I'd agree to disagree on this one. I, I feel like you could probably pull various early Game Boy Color games and it works out fairly alright. I'm going up and that is actually just the top of the room. Alright, so we need to get the barrel and go from there. I, mean, I guess I've done... Was this a new level, or had I just never gone into this? I think this is a new level. Yeah. Didn't even click in my head it's new. Maybe those are just Game Boy ca games. Yes! You, uh, make sure you're not uh, counting Game Boy games with, like, Super Game Boy support. This is a, just a black hole, just out there. Um... But yeah, Game Boy games with Super Game Boy support, not counting those. This would have to be, um, like, specifically Game Boy Color games, uh, which is not a very large category, so don't feel like, you know, don't feel like <laughs> there's too many, um, to really count. But, uh, I was gonna say I played the, um, the, the Dragon Quest 1 and 2. And that was a Game Boy Color release, and also there's Dragon Quest 3 on the Game Boy Color, and that's just like a super solid release. Um, I know Pokemon Crystal technically counts as a Game Boy Color game, um, because it is only available for that console, technically. Ah, oh, just eternally working my way down, but still having these, like, things all, all around. And this! This guy, every time, he's always here to mess up my day. Okay, well there's the... Oh, he's got an invisible platform so he can bounce up? Yeah, he does. They're kind of weird, like, background platforms. It's like, you can tell that they're there, but... I think it's weird that Wario wears white as well. Like, this is like Kirby's Adventure, where Kirby is just white because they didn't know what color Wario was supposed to be. But in, in this case, it's like, clearly Wario was yellow. Like, Mario Tennis was out by now, but... Yeah, just keep it being there. And I can't go that way. And that's where the chest is. So, again, he's he's eternally mocking me. And he's eternally mocking me, but this time I can at least bump him back the other way. Maybe he hates fire. He does hate fire. Oh, can I touch him in time? There we go. Now let me see if I can get a list of Game Boy Color games. Oh, I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Uh, yeah, the Game Boy Color includes 917 releases, excuse me? Games were released under two classes of cartridges. Class A dual mode cartridges compatible with Game Boy systems which predate the Game Boy Color. They feature the text yes in the column indicating two. Okay, so yeah. And then those games that are class B. So how about let's only count class B? 
available only with the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, SP, and the Game Boy Player. They featured the text now and the column for backward compatibility. So, I'm just say no. They don't really, they haven't numbered them really right. Harry Potter 1 and 2 for the Game Boy Color. I should, I should play those. So now I can pick up big guys. A, an ability that I swear I would have had ages ago, but apparently no. Um, I think I take it back. I think Dragon Quest 1 and 2 is not a Game Boy Color exclusive. Yeah, okay. So anyway, a couple more levels still showing up even to this day. Uh, so I think... Let's go on E3. Let's get that green. Let's get that red while I'm at it as well. Okay, so now that I'm able to pick up sticks. Uh, have you played those before? I have not- pl I've played Harry Potter 3. Someone made three super well done vi videos comparing Harry Potter 1 to 3. I've played 3, uh, which is a, an interesting game, we'll just say that. Um, my only issue with 3, maybe I'll, I'll play it at some point as well, because I actually know 3, but, um, I guess if 1 and 2 predate it, and a kind of spiritual in- you know, connected games. Uh, super interesting because they're certainly alive. They were Golden Sun ripoff. Well, the third one was a Golden Sun ripoff, though. It's it's very very much a Golden Sun ripoff, and I completely accept that. Apart from the gosh darn heckin' uh, Womp and Willow boss, it just absolutely comes out of nowhere, and you can be entirely soft locked because there are no or hard locked because there are no enemies to train off at a certain point. So now, look at this! The moment you've all been waiting for, finally being able to destroy that platform and continue on outside. Uh, I think I just need to know how to jump. I think I need to know how to jump. Um, but yeah, that, that's certainly like a period of decently good licensed games. I'll, I'll say that, like... Uh, I mean, it, it, it permeates a lot of time, like, there's a lot of licensed games, um, you know, earlier, later, that are pretty good. There's a lot of bad ones. Yeah, there's no specific period. Yeah, I think, I think there's a, there's a degree of, like, you know, generally avoid, maybe, because it's like, oh, you know, it's a licensed game, it could be bad, it's often bad, it's like, everyone's talking about, you know, Super Mario, but, um, I feel like for every, you know, wow, what's the, what's the number I'm looking for? There's a lot of, there's a lot of licensed games, like, everyone knows Goldeneye, we'll just say that. Battle for Middle-Earth 1 and 2, people really enjoyed Star Wars Battlefront, People really enjoy quite a bunch of the Star Wars games. I'm a big fan of Dark Forces, that one's great. Actually, yeah, I should be lifting this guy up. What am I doing? Bringing him to the right spot. I do not know where exactly I need to go. That guy's in there. I guess I'd go in here and flick a switch. Free my boy. Oh my gosh. To be fair, you can't really call the Star Wars games license technically as the studio that made them actually belong to the company holding the IP. I, I mean, yeah, they're, they're technically not licensed, but I guess, like, games based around existing IPs. Also, technically, doesn't, like, Lord of the Rings fall into that boat as well? Because there is, like, a Middle-Earth publishing brand. Look what happened when I licensed EA. Oh, exactly, like... Although, I, I wouldn't say that every Star Wars game before EA was also perfect. Like, Star Wars depends on the game. Exactly, exactly. Also, I love how I flick the switch and then I unflick the switch. Battle for Middle-Earth will license EA. Who's publishing the, um, the new Harry Potter game? 
Because EA used to, like, you know, have all that under lockdown, basically. Okay, up I go. Oop, down I go. That's also EA. Okay, green key, green key. And down I go. So green key, uh, the chest was earlier, wasn't it? It was in the... Oops. Yeah, I don't think it really matters who the publisher is too much. It does matter a little bit, but it does, it does matter... It doesn't matter as much as, like, I think just whoever's the creative control, and also how much they actually care about the, the licensed property. Uh, the Star Wars RTS in the Age of Empires 2 engine. I didn't know it was in the Age of Empires 2 engine, but, like, uh... My brain is just thinking, like, it's got a gold version. It's got a version that's called gold. I remember that. And I know I probably got it on Steam. It's interesting that, like, all the way out here is the green key. The red one is still kind of- yeah, Empire at War, that's the one. Uh, still kind of, yeah, pervades me where the, where the other key was, but you know what? I'll accept the green one. Because, uh, this will be an interesting, like, thing I'm gonna rush for, uh, for the end of the, the stream. I think if I go in here, now I've got the chest is just literally there. So, cool. There we go. Open the chest. And I got a bit of sand. Pocket sand. That's a bit weird I've gone around the red. I think, but... Oh no, Wispy Woods! He's allergic to sand. Ugh! Empire War, you gotta check out the mods people made. Yeah, I mean, I've got to try my best to, like, really get into, like, RTS games. I've, like, I've never sat down and really tried to understand them. Best I've got is my spore knowledge, the occasional few games of StarCraft, um, uh, Age of Empires 2, like, 3 a little bit as well. So, let's go back to the first level, because I had the sparkly on that, so... This is kind of fun as well. The fact that, like... Um... You know, like, the first level is still not clearing it all the way until... How... how many <laughs> treasures have I gotten? We actually at, like, 70 or something now? I wonder where I go in. Really should have caught on fire though. But yeah, I feel like licensed games like aren't a aren't a sign on the quality necessarily, but there are a lot of really good games that are not licensed games, and I think people will uh, note those. Did the tree trap me in here. He wants me to just bounce all the way up. Not get yawned. Don't get yawned. Oh. Okay. Hold on. Come on, my boy. Nope. And there we go. What what lies further up? Well, that's the blue key. I think I gotta go around the outside and hug the left wall. Here we go. Hug the left wall. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. As, as an example of like a, a game with a um... Well they, they're not licensed games, Assassin's Creed. They're just like games on their own, right? Unless they are licensed. Oh my gosh. They, yeah, they, they hold up on the, their own in some way. I need to play them at some point as well. Again, running in the Steam library. I'll get there, don't worry. 
is that there are non-licensed games that people are really good at. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, I said like three sentences and I was like, which one did that just apply to? Oh my gosh, there's so much of a fall that I need more donut. And now I gotta do some rather crafty jumps to make my way back up there. Bro, you gotta chuck the donut in the right way. Chuck the arc. Falling down. That's not where the chest is. Perhaps the chest is further up. Interesting. Whoops. Ah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Perhaps licensed games get a bad, a bad rap because there are, one, so many very average licensed games out there. And on top of that, I think a lot of people think that because there's so many, you know, bad ones, perhaps it's something to not really be proud of, I guess, if you enjoy the licensed game. But I don't know, you know, there's good licensed games out there. I think we all play licensed games. It's fine. That's the whole point of them. You know, you get it because you like the brand property underneath it. And then you're like, oh, like, how does this translate to, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's a spider. Oh, what's he sh Okay. Oh. Oh, no, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, I was like, I was like, you, you're not going all the way down out of, out of here. And then, fortunately, it's not. I think it's more a combination of there being bad ones, but also getting huge attention. That is true. There's probably a lot of really bad ones by sales. Okay, so actually, I never want to touch that. Right? Oh, and then I throw it up at him. Uh, so the bad ones can be very, very visible. Oh. Alright. Okay, it's going back up. Oh, he's ducking around. Okay, it's always spin that too. Okay, okay, okay. This is an interesting boss. Just because, like, again, spider. Makes sense. That's a, bit of, that's a bit of a hit, though, I'll tell you that. And he's got to take two hits. Alright, he's swatting up and down. Oh, he's spinning out three. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna hide up against the wall, he's gonna get me. Oh. There you go. He's got three eyes as well. He has revealed the wonderful platforms leading up to the chest. So yeah, so that is the last treasure of the first level. And on top of that... Look at that! It's an Alram clock. I hate Alram clocks. I just realized I haven't played any golf this stream. There has been no golf this entire stream. There you go. So that's a, that's a music box, but on top of that, that's the fifth music box, which means the temple is now finally open. So, how many treasures have I gotten? I'm pretty sure it's like 70. Yeah, bang on 70. So, <laughs> it's not been the fastest, because I've been trying to do like 75, well, 25 a stream, but that's okay. Um, so before I let you go, let's go into the temple. Now that I've got all five music boxes, a hidden figure. Wonderful work, Wario. Now replenish my power. <laughs> Four hour Tomb Raider stream. I'm actually, I, I'm perfectly willing to just like, cake all the rest in Next week's stream? I think it could work. I think it could work. Because it's like, that's all the rest of the treasures. So it's just like a checkbox at that point. Yeah, 
You know it's a good sign when the ceiling is crumbling in and... That's a lot of rocks at the ceiling, and fortunately, none of them hit water. Oh my gosh, it was a clown the whole time! You know he's evil, because he's got hands. Everyone with hands is evil. Oh, 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 oh. Finally, I am myself again. Now I can rule this world, and the outer one as well. I need you no longer, Wario. I shall crush you like a bug. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the final boss. Rudy the Clown, he's a clown. Uh, you gotta let him not grab you. He can punch you, but you can't let him grab you. Okay, clearly he's doing the same pattern over and over again, so I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, this is the final boss. Yeah, so if he grabs you, that is a, uh, effective game over. So game over that the game flat out just... <laughs> it gives you a game over. The, the whole game just finished. That was it. <laughs> I, I, I love how there's a game over. It's like... <laughs> it's like, excuse me? So you press A, wake Warrior up, and you, you go back to- that is- that is an 80% done. Yeah, exactly. So you gotta go back in here, fortunately you can just mash B and you're back in. I love how, like, being able to beat him purely hinges on you being able to lift large objects. Okay, okay. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, not whoa, whoa. Whoops. There we go. That's where I was doing this already. Right. So now he's super angry. Can you already get uh, other treasures? Uh, you can. Oh, dang it. You can't get other treasures. Um, the, the other items still kind of hinge on uh, being able to do stuff in certain... As in some items are still unlocking parts of other levels. Um, but... Uh, yeah, you basically need, like, pretty much you just need to get all the items such that you can get the, um, the final, you know, the, the, the golden gauntlets and, uh, be able to, like, lift up large objects because you're gonna need to do it for this boss fight. And then, uh, one of the things that you can get is the kind of, like, sneezing powder, I guess, for the tree, and that gets you the last, uh, music box. Which, that's kind of clever, like, how, you know... The game is non-linear in the sense that you can do, you know, many levels. And there's many kinds of, like, items that, like, I might have been able to get by now. I should really duck when he does that. Whoop. Whoop. That's a duck one. Yeah, yeah. That was it, by the way. I think. I think that's it. Anyway, with the clown destroyed... The ground rumbles, the temple blows up, and uh, we release stars to the world. Lots of stars. The star power... ...reveals that you've been punching old women the entire time. And I feel better about it. I feel like at this point in the game, it's like, there's been no story. There's been zero story. And then it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, like, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Long ago, this was a peaceful world. But that meddlesome being appeared and tried to take control. We managed to seal away his power in the five music boxes. But he used the last of his power to change us into strange beings. Fearing his return, we tried to stop you, but we never thought you would defeat him. Thank you very much. So we give you all the treasure you have collected so far. Now then, let me send you back to your own world. Oh my gosh. It's 
like poetry, it rhymes. You got a big bag full of stuff. Full of goodies you just picked up. And anyway, well, that's the reward. So Wario has, uh, I guess, returned this music box back to its former glory. And with that, we reach the credits. So don't worry, there will still be another stream. I will properly finish the rest of the levels and go for that. But I thought, you know what, like, I'm at the right point that I could probably just rush in and go for, uh, go for the end of the game there. Um, because, yeah, you only need, and you could probably do it with a few fewer items as well. I feel like probably in the 60s or so, number of items you need. Um, but there's a few extra ones that I've gotten so far, and, uh, there'll still be some items that will unlock some more levels. Um, I think? I, actually, I don't think there's any levels that I haven't gone into now. I think I have visited every level. But there's been a few where it's like, oh, I've been getting the blue treasures and I've been completing them all now, so that's good fun. Um, overall, so far though, like, definitely I feel like I'm getting a bit more and more and more lost. Um, William Trinan, man, they wrote William on this one. Poor Bill, poor Bill. Actually, I don't know, probably wasn't mine. Um, but I would definitely say that, like, this game is, like, super duper kind of top shelf. It's, it knows exactly what it is, um, which is that fun, like, just kind of collect-a-thon and just keep, like, unlocking more things and understanding more and more and more about the game and, like, hey, what, what items reveal more about the world? And the only thing, I guess, is that, like, once you get near the end of the game, it's, like, the scale feels a bit big. You're trying to remember, like, okay, like, I got this item, and after I've kind of been picking up other items, which items did they shine, or which levels did they shine, um, to indicate that there was something to get. Uh, that starts to get a bit tricky later in the game, um, and there's not really an easy way to tell yourself which ones you need to go into, so. That is the end. And I think the game just kind of sits there. Yeah, yeah, writing down notes is probably the way to go. Um, so yeah, but anyways, with that, that is the, uh, the soft end of the game. Tune in next week, where I shall continue on with getting all this stuff and finishing all this stuff. So yeah, so if you enjoyed any of this, or you missed out bits of this, you can always follow on Twitch. Uh, remember Game Boy and Game Boy Color Games, you should have dedicated pages for you to take notes at the end of Exactly, exactly. You'd write down this kind of stuff. Pull out that Pokemon menu with like the, f which has like 50 pages long, full of stuff. Uh, it tells me about all the gym badges in that as well. So, um, but yeah, yeah. So you can follow if you if you missed any bit of it, or you know, subscribe or follow on Twitch. Not subscribe. Subscribe is the paying me, and I have not set up any form of paying me on any of these services. Um, so yeah, uh, and yeah, the vod will be up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, I can run down any of that kind of stuff. I think I wrote it down once, maybe, but I kind of felt like, oh, I want to preserve this manual, so I tried my best to, like, keep it as pristine as possible. I still have my old Game Boy boxes, which are not in a great state, but, uh, you subscribe to my OnlyFans for free. Bro, I wish. I wish. Wait. What am I signing up for? Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, catch you fellas later. See ya.